Okay. So the mm, oh no, where am I? Super. Super. Okay. So let's um, start the lecture. Um, what I would also like to um, start uh, from is um, we will talk about the modeling of the rolling process today. Um, this is the list of um, the lecturers and facilitators um, for this course. And um, what I want to mention here is that um, today we will be um, talking about this lecture here. Um, so you would have already understood um, we went through a few lectures in the beginning about introduction to metal forming and fundamentals of numerical simulation and metal forming. Then Dr. Irani was engaged in explaining things about uh, numerical simulations, their methods and terminologies, structure of numerical solvers and metal forming simulations and mathematical modeling of flow curves. Um, I hope you uh, learned a lot in those lectures. And now we would like to um, use that information and data on uh, the structure of numerical solvers and metal forming and and your um, information of how to model the flow curves and build upon that and basically start with um, modeling of um, the rolling process today it will be more of a theoretical part um, but in the future the next lecture will be related to um, a case study on the simulation of rolling and there we will take a practical example uh, we already have run a simulation and we will see how um, um, what are the results which we obtain and what is the significance and how we do it and how we see it so that would be more interesting and um, yeah um, a practical use of what we will learn today so the learning objectives for today's lecture will be short introduction to the ruling process and its importance um, then we will talk about the types of ruling process and um, the setup uh, which we generally use. Um, we will start with uh, from those setups we will choose a simplified 2D 2 high flat rolling process and we will develop a, a few numerical models um, for some calculations and that kind of process. And then uh, uh, what I have done is I have prepared a worksheet um, which can be used um, with the developed simplified numerical models to calculate the giving, given rolling process parameters. Um, this is something which we did in the past manually, so by calculating things, by discussing a few examples. Now with that sheet it will be much faster and easier and more intuitive. And robust as well, so everybody will get the same answers and they will not be lost in um, calculations between uh, radians and degrees and so on. Um, and then we will talk about proposing solutions to the underlying simplifications during modeling, how to uh, overcome those simplifications, uh, the methods and techniques for accurate modeling, um, and eventually we will conclude our um, today's lecture here. But then in the next lecture we will start building on this um, accurate modeling technique and uh, use a finite element uh, tool uh, to develop a model and learn about it in more detail. Okay, so far so good. Um, this is also something which we have um, studied before. Uh, what I would like to do is make a poll on two things. Um, one thing which I want to ask is, um, have you um, already taken the course of fundamentals of plastic deformation? I know I have already asked this question, but I just want to ask it again. So have you already participated in uh, fundamentals of plastic deformation course before? Because this is something which you already covered there. So if you have already done that, um, yeah, it, 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 it will be slightly different but more or less the methodology will be the same. Okay, so I see a few students haven't, some have. Okay, interesting. 
interesting. And then um, what I would like to ask is, um, were you present in the uh, introduction, introductory um, lecture of this course, so numerical simulation and mental forming? which means where we discuss this background of rolling and so on. No. So uh, uh, Mustafa, I see that you're writing no, uh, but what I'm doing is I have started a poll. You can directly vote on your screen and that would be much easier. So most of the students say they were present. A few say no. Um, and uh, okay, so that makes sense which means that it would be appropriate to just quickly go through all this uh, so uh, today we will be talking about the ruling process which can be classified in the form of um, which can be classified as flat rolling I have to start open flat rolling and profile rolling where flat rolling uh, basically means that we uh, we will have a flat product at the end and profile rolling means that we will have a shape product at the end um, now profile rolling can again be divided in full profile and hollow profiles which means that the solid objects when they come out or the hollow profile means that um, they're, they're they are hollow inside um, and then these can these shapes so flat rolling and profile rolling can be prepared both by using longitudinal rolling processes or cross or skew rolling processes. The cross and skew rolling processes are very special. So they are generally only used uh, for specific shapes and structures, but generally we use longitudinal rolling process and therefore you will see them in both cases. And then there are different directions of how the tool um, behaves to make all these shapes and occur. So this is generally the classification of rolling process. And this uh, is a very nice depiction of how different rolling processes are carried out uh, to convert liquid metal into desired shape. Here we have our blast furnace where um, we are manufacturing steel, which is then uh, which then goes through uh, open hearth furnace or um, uh, different other types of furnaces uh, to be made more uh, to be converted into to be converted into more purified state and alloyed to the desired requirements and then um, it is rolled into different shapes so then here we, we see uh, continuous uh, rolling mills where uh, the steel is rolled into desired thick slabs or pieces, which you can see placed here for different cases. And then they are further processed by different processes, what we saw in the previous uh, presentation with different kinds of rolling mills, with different kinds of processes to convert them into the desired shapes, which are mentioned here. Generally, this is the overview. It starts with the same material, um, molten steel it starts with the same alloying methodology it generally is more or less the same with uh, continuous rolling here but then um, dividing it into different components div dividing it into different lines where it is different types of rolls and different um, loading conditions are used uh, we get different shapes which are useful and which we use for um, our manufacturing um, now, this part has been taken out from um, the bigger process to see closely what generally happens. Um, usually, on an industrial scale, discontinuous rolling process is adopted, which means that there will be a specifically one industrial sector. Let me choose a laser point. There will be one industrial sector which will be specialized in uh, looking at the um, uh, looking at the rolling mills, um, the con uh, the continuous rolling of the slabs and billets, which are then uh, reduced to a certain thickness, uh, rolled into coils and um, and then shipped to other industries where uh, 
they are then transformed into the required shapes and sizes so they're discontinuous because there is one step where we convert liquid metal into desired shape and then we use this as a raw material for another industry to convert this into the final product which we need now it has certain um, um, advantages over um, continuous process and for that you must remember the classification of the forming process is based on temperatures which we studied so um, the hot forming process in the hot forming process um, it is much easier to uh, get bigger drafts so reduce the thickness very quickly and convert it into the desired um, thickness uh, more effectively whereas if we want to get an adequate surface finish if we want to get uh, uh, a profile or a shape or um, specific attributes we want to associate specific attributes then we need to heat treat it um, in between and therefore it is more advisable to use a cold forming process uh, for uh, to, to get more um, better tolerances and surface finish and so on um, so if you will remember what are the advantages disadvantages of hot forming and cold forming and warm forming it is much easier to understand why on industrial scales discontinuous processes are adopted rather than using continuous processes to finished products okay so far so good and i have to select pen to okay and if we look even closer uh, between the rules we uh, can see from these pictures how the ruling process takes place um, so we start with I would like to change the color hmm. so we start with a where a sheet is coming through just focus on these um, points which are um, embedded on the surface of the sheet which is being rolled that uh, here there is a certain gap between these points so certain distance between these points this is the initial thickness of our sheet and this is the final thickness of our sheet which we want to obtain so if we call it t naught this is tf uh, initial thickness and final thickness we see that t naught is greater than tf um, and what happens is that this material when flows through these rolls um, it it keeps it gets in touch with the roll from this point to this point and within this zone uh, the material slowly flows through the cavity is pressed to a certain um, uh, is compressed to a certain uh, thickness and uh, what happens is that the distance between these points will can be seen to continuously change from A to B and then to C and then to D eventually when the process has finished and what we also see is that uh, there is a curve here which means that the points on the surface are rolling faster than the points in the middle and that creates a, relative, a certain profile or a certain um, associated um, uh, property mechanical property attribute with um, the rolled uh, profile or geometry so this is generally uh, how the ruling process goes on now where we have a roller surface which is pressing on the sheet and, and which is going through uh, this area and getting reduced to the, our desired uh, thickness and while uh, that is happening the material is undergoing permanent deformation and uh, yeah uh, uh, that's what is happening and we can represent that uh, problem um, with a schematic diagram such as shown here where we call this type of configuration as um, I will change that again we call this type of ruling configuration as two high rolling mill um, where we have two rollers um, rotating in the opposite directions um, so that uh, the direction of the material flow remains the same 
and here in this case we have uh, an initial billet which we are rolling to our desired um, thickness uh, through ruling operation um, and, and yeah so we have this kind of uh, we can represent our ruling process with this kind of simple schematic now just remember that we are representing it as a 2d um, problem uh, so we are only looking at the problem from from the 2d perspective but actually it is a 3d process where um, the billet will also have be something like this distributed in the third dimension and yeah so it will be something like this but here we are only looking at the um, 2d um, perspective and then we can label it uh, with appropriate uh, uh, with appropriate coefficients to make sure um, to, to see what is actually uh, happening and also to um, then um, easily uh, model it later so we have two rules with um, roller diameters uh, roller radiuses of r and roller diameters of uh, d i would say so then it would be this and this and then we have uh, initial height h naught and final height of uh, the billet which is h1 we can also rename them as uh, t naught and t1 so initial thickness and final thickness because in in, in some equations you will find um, um, you will find this uh, kind of um, um, this kind of coefficients and the, the others you will find at uh, this thickness represented by h and then we have uh, uh, initial velocity of uh, the material and the final velocity of the material we also then have the velocity of the roller which will which is rotational so these two velocities are linear velocities uh, and uh, um, vw the roller velocity is basically linear velocity on the surface but it is also um, it is rotating then we have a certain friction coefficient uh, between the rolls and then we have uh, a certain area contact area and so on um, so this is what um, we generally uh, so this is how we uh, how we generally uh, see model this um, uh, in a simplified way now if I if we take a look at um, this area here on on in the entrance we know that the initial uh, volume I will name it with V naught with thick V naught the initial volume of the material in the beginning and the final volume of the material in the end should always remain the same now the initial volume of the material in the beginning is initial length of the material multiplied by initial uh, width initial thickness of the material multiplied by initial width of the material and the final volume of the material basically is uh, final length of the uh, material into final thickness of the material into final width of the material now when we assume um, a 2d case we assume that the uh, width of the material will not change throughout this process so we assume that the initial width of the material here and the final width of the material here are always the same which means that they can be cancelled out and then we are left with two terms now understand that the initial thickness of the material is more 
and the final thickness of the material is less which means to keep this equation uh, consistent the initial length of the material will be less and the final length of the material will be more so if we are reducing the thickness the if the initial length of the material let's say is one meters the final length of the material will be much more than one meters depending on the thickness of the uh, de depending on how the thickness of the material is reduced now to to understand this what we can do is we can divide both sides with time and this term basically converts it into velocity so length versus time is velocity so now i'm using small v not uh, multiply by t naught is equals to vf is the final thickness now if we are reducing the thickness so tf will always be less than t naught so this will always be the case in the rolling process the final thickness of the material will always be less than the initial thickness of the material and to keep this uh, equ uh, equivalence of these equations v f will always be greater than v naught do you understand this so this means that the the exit velocity of the material will be greater than the initial velocity of the material which also means that the velocity of the material here at this point is different from the velocity of the material at this point and the velocity is continuously varying within this uh, rolling process and that is what we want to see in the um, in, 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 in the next slide so that is a basic assumption and generalization using a 2d process on uh, how we see a rolling process happening now what happens is that uh, when we are considering this uh, a 2d process which actually isn't um, there is also a third dimension so if you look at the rules in the um, in the third dimension we see that the rules are fixed from both ends and they are free and they act as a fixed fixed beam um, basically rolling a sheet and when we apply a certain amount of load here which is shown with the arrows uh, and we and the sheet is going through this there is a certain r bending force acting on the rolls which is elastic so the rollers only deform elastically and once that pressure is released they come back to their original position but there is a distribution of load uh, on on the uh, on the sheet during this rolling process now in our case what we do is uh, we assume that this we again assume that we will not observe this case so we assume that the roller will always stay flat flat rolling is not so flat it has its own issues and as stated in this slide but we are not going to discuss them in detail rather we will focus on the ideal rolling process in which we assume that there is a constant flat force in the rolling process in in the third direction so that is another so now we have taken two assumptions one assumption is the width of the um, sample does not change through the rolling process uh, and the second assumption which we have taken is that there is no bending in the in the roller um, th along the depth of um, along along the depth it remains flat so this is something which uh, um, we uh, we already discussed that the material velocity at this point is v not at this point it is vf and vf is greater than v not and in this zone where the roll where rolling is taking place this uh, velocity is constantly increasing 
and then there is another velocity of uh, there there is another velocity involved which is velocity of the roller which is represented here by vu um, which is basically the rotational velocity of the roller and the and the rotational velocity of the roller is constant so it remains fixed which means the material which is entering and touching the rolls is slow and the velocity of the roller is faster until this point which is called a neutral point at this point the velocity of the roll is equal to the velocity of the material going through this gap and after that the velocity of the roller is slower and the velocity of the material is faster if I show it with the help of that um, it is also written here in the form of um, equations but if I show it in the form of arrows I would say the velocity of the roller is something like this so it is faster here the velocity of the material is slower here and it is slower here and the velocity of the material is faster here so this first part which is it is called backward slip of the material and the point after the neutral point is called forward slip of the material now this backward slip of the material this area here until neutral point is responsible for to pull the material into um, this gap and this area after the neutral point is responsible for um, uh, slip to occur and for the surface softnesses and so on and restricts the material to go through the rolling process this is something probably which we will uh, look later but you have to understand that how um, the, the material velocity is changing and based on uh, and based on this what we also see is um, uh, what is shown here in this what is shown here in this graph that if you look at the if you look at the strain here if you if you divide it into really small parts and look at the total amount of strain at each point we see that the total strain which is the change in length over the original length is increasing from point 1 to point 2 let's say if we see the material going through this from point 1 to point 2 it we if we follow this path we will see that the overall strain in the material initially is higher and as we go further it relatively becomes uh, it relatively becomes slower and slower and on the other hand um, if we can if we get the slope of this strain we see that the uh, the strain rate reduces significantly from point A to point B so the speed of deformation is constantly varying throughout this process and the total amount of strain is also varying throughout this process so the material undergoes you have already studied in uh, fundamentals of plastic deformation course and uh, and the, and um, the modeling of the plastic behavior of the materials that how the, the strain rate affects the material attributes and properties uh, and that is and and we see here that through this ruling process the strain rate on the material is constantly changing so um, it will be directly affecting the variation in the material uh, flow behavior here in this gap now what we have done is we have taken a further smaller section of this area i will use a different color probably we are taking this area and plotting it again here in the next um, uh, slide and what we want to do here is we want to find out um, that uh, friction coefficient or the relationship between the um, the required force for rolling and um, the resistance to rolling so if we consider um, so if we consider this line going uh, if we consider this line going through the center of the roll um, somewhere um, this would be 
the radius of the roller and then we see that there is there is a normal line which is perpendicular to the roller surface here where the material starts to touch and we can resolve um, we can resolve this into if I take my coordinate system as X and Y we can resolve this vector Fn normal force into its two components where this angle alpha uh, which is between this the start point and the end point of the contact we uh, um, uh, and um, this can be resolved into fn sine of alpha and fn cos of alpha and, and then there is another uh, force which is the reaction force and this can also be resolved into fn sine of alpha and fn cos of alpha and what we do here is uh, we see that these two components um, should be so sum of all forces in the system should be equal to zero so then we can write this equation which is fr cos of alpha is equals to mu fn cos of alpha and as uh, as the reaction force is equal to the normal force we can get um, we can come to this conclusion here so we we can say that mu Oh, sorry. We can say that mu, the friction coefficient here, is should is greater than equal to ten of alpha. And that is the condition of grab. So basically, um, the the horizontal force, this one, should be greater than this force to uh, make the ruling process possible. If these are, um, if the if the forward force is less than the backward force, the um, uh, the ruling process will not um, occur or take place. Um, so then um, we start with the calculations of alpha and so on and um, yeah so th th we, we, we will come to this but what I want to do here is I just want to quickly share two links which I found quite useful it is very difficult to um, to um, to do all these calculations and to um, to explain all this in detail with all the derivations and everything in this short lecture where we want to cover the relatively advanced uh, level and not the basic level but what I can do is I can share these two links here in public chat which you can uh, copy and take a look at them later for your further clarifications and understandings on all these calculations which are necessary to extract these um, values or formulas which are shown here in the slides what we will do here is we will just quickly touch them but of course you can go through them um, there so yeah um, and then um, there are two kinds of uh, maximum deformations per uh, there, there are two kinds of conditions to pull through one is free rolling where we just let the material follow flow through the rolls automatically and the other is pulling condition where we forcefully um, fix the material oh where we forcefully uh, pull the material uh, using some mechanism through the pass and then there are two different uh, formulas to calculate uh, the the maximum deformation which can take place per roll pass and the theoretical formulas for um, this kind of um, um, calculation is if it is free the f formula to calculate the maximum draft 
which can take in place is uh, R multiplied by mu square, where mu is the friction coefficient, and the theoretical part for the forced um, for the pulled through uh, process is 4 R mu square, which of course this would be much higher than this value because here we are uh, pulling it through. Um, what I want to mention here is that you can see th this H max is also called a maximum draft. It will come later, but I want to clarify it here. This is also called a maximum draft. I don't know why this writing quite well. So max draft. We also call it D. Um, and this is basically the uh, the the maximum difference of thickness. So it is H naught minus H one. And the maximum draft means uh, how how much this value can be. So delta H uh, max uh, in the f in th in the free condition would be um, R. R mu square and in the theoretical condition uh, and in the pull condition will be 4 R mu square where R is the radius of the roller and mu is the friction coefficient and then we have already studied that this friction coefficient is dependent on um, several values uh, se several physical aspects so for example like the surface roughness temperature and roller radius Yeah, so, that's, so this is already present in this slide. So now you see that uh, the ruling process is generally dependent on um, the on the friction coefficient mu. Um, our applied conditions should be greater than this friction coefficient, which is a physical quantity and um, and should be satisfied. And this friction coefficient depends on lubrication conditions or we can call it as uh, the surface conditions on how um, uh, how is the surface finish and the surface contact between the roller and the workpiece it is depending on the working material what kind of material uh, we are trying to roll and it is then dependent also majorly on temperature on um, at what temperature we are um, ro uh, doing this kind of deformation uh, generally we use uh, uh, lubricated conditions generally we use uh, working materials which we intend to use for other different manufacturing um, use for different manufacturing and processes but um, the temperature of uh, the working temperature significantly influences the friction coefficient of the material and we observe that for cold rolling conditions the friction coefficient is around 0 0.1 for warm rolling conditions the friction coefficient is around 0 0.2 and for hot working conditions it is from 0 0.4 to 0 0.7 and it can go as high as 1.0 which is maximum um, sticking which is maximum uh, friction coefficient which can be caused due to sticking so at very high temperatures um, at the the surfaces of the the material and the roller can um, join together temporarily and therefore we will get a very high friction coefficient and that would mean that um, we can do we can get very high um, reduction in thickness in one pass if we want to if we want to now these are a few slides where all the um, all the formulas and uh, everything is written. I, I have to go through them one by one relatively quickly, um, but you will see that generally they are divided in three sections: uh, instantaneous, which which would mean that at a certain at a certain point. What is the value? So if we want to calculate it here or here or here or here, what are its values? Then the total, 
which would mean that the difference between this point and this point that is usually what we are interested in and the average so the mean value if we say what is the value uh, what is the overall value so generally you will see that um, these values are all these formulas are given for these three different um, uh, states um, but we will uh, in, 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 in for now we will only focus on the total values or the largest values in, in, in our case and um, for for the pressed length um, for for the total pressed length which would mean that uh, the length of the material in um, the linear length of the material uh, from this point to this point what is the total pressed length uh, can be given with a simplified formula of um, this um, of, of this and then the pressed area is depending on the width of the material which is not given here but whatever it is given we it can be assumed and then can be used for um, this kind of study um, and then a related height change is relatively um, not um, not too much used but degree of deformation is something which we significantly use and the largest amount of degree of deformation is basically um, the total amount of um, the total amount of strain that happened in the material which can be uh, calculated using this formula um, and the and the equivalent degree of deformation can then be calculated using this formula Um, you would observe that um, uh, all these calculations are depending on this um, alpha the uh, the uh, um, there's a question sorry sir we have to remember all these formulas and that is something which I am getting to once we pass through this um, as a quick answer no you don't have to remember all these formulas uh, but yeah um, but there are a few important ones which uh, if you will know can be useful can can be quite useful for several calculations um, so this is the angle uh, alpha which is uh, the angle of point a b and c where b is the middle of the rollers and c is the last contact and a is the first contact and this angle is quite important because we use it in several calculations so to calculate this angle um, there are different formulas given here so there are different approaches to calculate this and a simplified way of calculating it is using this formula which me which is where delta h is the change in height um, of the billet and r is the radius of the roller and then we can get uh, again um, that is something which we discussed before so the so the change in height and then also the maximum draft and so on which are given in this slide the circumferential of uh, the circumferential velocity of the rollers the linear circumferential velocity of the rollers is depending on the angular velocity and the roll radius and the angular velocity is depending on the number of cycles per unit time number of cycles per unit time um, and then the initial velocity and the final velocity are depending on um, so then we have so then we can also define a certain initial velocity and with that we can also get the results of the final velocity of the material when it comes out um, the position of no slip point so this is also important this is the point here where the velocity of the roller was directly equal to the velocity of the material flowing through it and the angle that angle is called alpha fl uh, and that can be calculated using um, this formula where alpha naught is the bite angle 
the total angle and mu is the friction coefficient so we now have already um, analyzed these um, uh, values and how to calculate them so these uh, so they can be used to calculate this now I, as I, as I said these are several approximations so they can so they can be simplified to make this formula relatively simple or several approximations can be exempted and more appropriate relative layer values can be used and then therefore different scientists have proposed a different um, formulas to calculate this um, position of no slip point or the angle to no slip point and their formulas are given here which you will see are slightly more complicated now the for the, the no slip point the forward slip and the back slip can be calculated generally by using these formulas which we are not um, which you can go through and Let's come to uh, this simple designer rule process problem. But before that, what I would like to ask you is, uh, this is your Opal course. And here, if you will go into the learning material, and uh, if you will go into this um, folder of extra study material, you will find this Excel SX file, which is an Excel file. And if you will click this, you will be able to download it to your computers and open it using Excel. Um, so if you have Excel, you, it would be great if you can just download this file and um, see what's in it. So you will probably see something like this. So what I would like to do here now is open up a poll and ask you if you have MS Excel in your systems. So which would mean that you will be able to open up this file. That's great. That's great. Super. Super. And um, so that's a good result. And then I would like to ask if you have downloaded the file. You were able to find it. I want to ask if you were able to uh, navigate to Opal and go to the folder and were able to find it and download it. And if you're answering no, I would like to ask why, because then I can help you do that. You can write your answers in public chat and I will try to resolve them. because this is what I was talking about. So in the past, we have been um, doing these calculations manually, which took a lot of time. And in this um, remote teaching setup, there were very several wrong answers and uh, difficulties. So this time, what we tried to do was just start with something like this, preparing worksheets um, where students can intuitively and um, do, do all this and we will know what answers they are getting and they can also make sense of it okay so if again if you haven't um, I would suggest that you go to the Opal course and um, go to the extra learning material folder and download this file and then you will have it so uh, most of the students said yes they have downloaded the file a few said no and i don't know why <laughs> 
but again yeah it's no issue at all so if you will come to this file um, these two things are labeled as inputs and outputs so the inputs are where you will um, give all the data which is needed for the calculation so of course this can be done the other way around if the formulas are reversed but we are not doing it here and then you will get certain outputs for example I say that the initial um, thickness of the billet uh, is um, is 20 and the final thickness of the um, and the final thickness is 10 now I'm talking in millimeters and the width of the blank for now it is not important but I can say that it is 5 and the roller diameter is something which is um, which is um, uh, which is not really um, uh, can can be changed so what we can do is we can let's say start with 500 so then we will see how the same reduction with different roller diameters is affected and the ruler is doing one revolutions per minute and the friction coefficient uh, and the friction coefficient is 0.3 now the friction coefficient is generally depending on several parameters which is again written here in this um, uh, in, in, in this uh, text here but um, I am just assuming a certain value and then you will see here that uh, the reduction in height is 10 millimeters of course 20 minus 10 is 10 the mean height is 15 so the average value of uh, 20 plus 10 divided by 2 is 15 um, pressed length which means that the overall total length of the material um, undergoing the ruling is 50 millimeters so this 10 millimeter reduction in height with 500 millimeter roller diameter will be achieved after 50 millimeters pressed length and the pressed area is calculated by using this width value and that is 250 millimeter squares okay now the degree of deformation I would want to do it like this now the degree of deformation um, is basically the strain the total strain in the material and that is 0 0.693 or 69.3 percent so it is quite a lot of um, reduction and the angular velocity of the roller can be calculated by using a certain formula and it requires this roller diameter and the number of revolutions and I think it is pi dn over 30 and we can calculate it using this but the results are in radians per second um, and the circum uh, and the circumferential velocity in the form millimeters per second is basically then we convert and then we convert that angular velocity into linear velocity by multiplying it with r so that is 20, uh, 26 millimeters per second on the surface on the surface um, now these uh, uh, values are interesting so we already uh, um, studied that the uh, that the formula to calculate the this alpha angle alpha which is called uh, grab angle um, is delta h over r and square root I have already implemented this formula here so we get this value of 0 0.2 now it is in radians and if we want to convert it into degrees then it is 11.45 degrees so this is the value of alpha and then from here we can calculate uh, the value of 10 of alpha so the value of 10 of alpha is 0 0.2 and then we see that 0 0.20 basically lies here so if we are doing so if we are doing cold rolling the friction coefficient will be 0 0.1 which means that this uh, will be less than this one whereas for ac effective rolling the actual friction coefficient should be greater than this value so if we are doing warm rolling or hot rolling then this would be possible otherwise it would not be possible and the maximum draft here is written as 22.5 I don't know why mm-hmm 
and and the maximum draft uh, means that um, this depends on the friction coefficient so whatever we choose and the maximum draft means how much thickness reduction we can take it, it is confusing if we do not understand uh, what we are trying to do here but what I would like to do is I would like to keep the friction coefficient up to 0 0.2 and then the maximum draft which you can do is 10 which is perfectly what is here understood so do you understand this um, worksheet on how it is working and where we are giving all the inputs and where we are getting all the outputs uh, I would like to start a poll Yes, sorry, sir, I have to remember. Okay, so I have started a poll where I would like to know your feedback on if you understand this, uh, if you understand how this worksheet occurs, happens. Because the formulas which we studied on the sheets are basically implemented inside these cells. So you're not looking at all the formulas, but you're just looking at but you will be quickly looking at all the outputs which will be which we will be getting and I see that the number of responses has significantly reduced so most of the students say that no they do not understand what is happening okay okay um, no problem um, this is normal um, uh, this is very normal Us. Um, this is very normal so what we will do is so what we will do is we will put this here and we will have this slide in front of us now try to solve this issue and what I want to ask is that identify the role radius but it's but it's already done uh, but it's already done okay so if you have any questions on if you can suggest circumferential so if you can suggest on what you're not understanding if you can write it in the chat it will be much easier for me to um, to um, address that issue and explain it and explain it in, in a better way um, but in any case what we can do is let's change a few things so let's say our initial height is 30 and our final height is 10 let's keep it like this and then we are in the hot rolling regimes so now the problem has slightly changed so the initial height is 30 and the final height is 10 and now I want you to identify the radius of the roller which will be used to do this kind of process using the worksheet which you which you have so what you can do in this worksheet is you can give the input of initial thickness of 30 and the final thickness of 10 and then you will get all these certain values and where you see that the 10 of alpha the value of 10 of alpha is what is 0 0.29 yes so this means that the friction coefficient the value of mu should be greater than this value which can be anything from 0 0.3 to onwards whatever and this process the ruling process will take place but now uh, assume the roller diameter to be 200 millimeters 
or assume the roller diameter to be 100 millimeters. Now the tan of alpha, the value of tan of alpha is 0.73. Yes. So you see that if we are for, for the same initial thickness and final thickness, if we are if we are changing the roller diameter to let's say 100, we assume that the, ro the roller diameter is uh, the roller diameter is 100 millimeters. So the roller radius will be 50 millimeters. The the required friction coefficient extensively increases, and similarly, you will see that for the hot rolling conditions, what we have also done is we have given another formula. Uh, and if you change the friction coefficient, let's say you may keep the friction coefficient to 0 0.5, which, which is in the hot working condition. And then you will see that the maximum draft, which can be rolled is 12.5 millimeters. So if our maximum draft here is 20 millimeters and not 12.5 millimeters, this will not be possible. Do you understand it? So what we are doing here in slightly reverse engineering fashion is changing the roller diameter, increasing it slightly to match our requirements. And that is how you can use this worksheet. So now the The number of students giving feedback has significantly reduced. So I don't know if the others are busy in working with the sheet or they are not responding or they're trying to figure out what went how. So what I can do is I can show you here again. Mm, what I can do is I can Just leave it. Um, oh yeah. So the maximum draft, uh, the maximum amount of the material which can be rolled depends on the roller radius, the roller radius or roller diameter, and the friction coefficient. Um, now, w depending on what kind of rolling process we define, so is it cold rolling, warm rolling, or hot rolling, we can change our friction coefficients. If I assume that we are doing warm rolling, we can select a friction coefficient of 0 0.2. Okay, and then we see that the maximum draft has reduced to four millimeters. So if the difference between these two values will be more than four millimeters, we will not be able to do, we will not be able to successfully roll our material using the simplified model which we have. Um, but if we increase this roller diameter to 500, let's say, then we see that the maximum draft has increased to 10. But this initial thickness and final thickness difference is still higher. So then maybe we, if we want to keep this, then there are two possibilities. Either we further increase the roller diameter, then it becomes 20. Or if we keep this 500, and we slightly increase this to hot forming ranges rather than warm forming ranges, then we see that the maximum draft which you can uh, 
uh, roll is 40 millimeters and now as our reduction in height is 20 millimeters this makes sense so this process can be done so this is a quite an interesting worksheet you will need because I prepared it so I, I feel it is much easier for me to follow through but if you will uh, spend a little bit more time on um, this worksheet with all the formulas uh, which you have um, or uh, um, it will be much easier for you to um, make sense of it and see um, w what is happening and how um, we are calculating all these values okay and if you have any questions you can ask them in public chat and I will be happy to answer them otherwise we can move on with the lecture I have just a few more topics to cover and then we will wind up so are you okay with the worksheet that is a poll which you can answer on so I would suggest that just spend a little bit more time in understanding uh, how it was developed if you will look at the slides again if you will look at all the formulas and maybe do a calculation with hand and then use this worksheet it, it will make it much easier and simpler for you to understand it and use it in the future and of course um, and of course what you can do is um, prepare a certain worksheet of your own as well using the formulas um, Ardash asked uh, can you explain draft once more draft is quite a quite quite an easy concept it is not that difficult what I will do is I will um, move this worksheet so and I can write here so draft is quite easy So draft is quite easy uh, which means this is the initial uh, height or initial thickness of the of the of the billet and this is the final height and final thickness of the billet and the draft basically is um, it's not minus h1 so this would mean the draft and and we call it d Oh. let me write it again so we call it D okay and the maximum draft is but the maximum value of how much it this difference can be such that the rolling or the grabbing condition will be satisfied and the material will be able to pull and material will be pulled through so if so from here this depends on the roller radius and uh, the friction coefficient and if they are bigger and higher then the this reduction in height can more of this can be achieved if it is smaller then less of this can be achieved how do you know the parameters to use on your materials to roll with the first question is can you please explain what the tan alpha not okay okay so I have to go on a slide before yeah so for example in this slide we see that this is the bite angle the angle between the center of the roll initial point the final contact point and this is theta we also call it alpha so this is the contact angle and and if you will go through the video lectures which I shared the link with you before you will see that after derivation we realize that for the grab grabbing condition to be uh, valid this friction coefficient in the system should be greater than tan of alpha 
and that is why we are interested in finding out alpha and finding out tan of alpha and so that we can see if this condition is satisfied or not how do you know the parameters to use on your materials to roll we we don't so we are just assuming all those parameters and we are just doing certain calculations so in the future if we will know the real parameters it will be much easier for us to do all these calculations but for now we are just assuming all those values okay i hope that answers your questions Okay, now, until now, what we have done is we have um, we have assumed um, certain things. We had two assumptions. One was that um, the rollers will always remain flat, so there will be no bending, not even elastic. The other assumption was that um, the width of the material does not change, so it remains fixed. But that is actually not the case. In actual materials, um, uh, these two uh, uh, these two parameters do change, and they affect um, the rolling process, and they affect the assumptions and the and the, the values which we have taken. Um, um, and here it is um, written that uh, the knowledge of free widening is important for accurate calculation of pressed area, and the, the widening can occur uh, in um, in two ways. One is uh, one is this extension of the exterior edge and the other is um, bulging of the exterior edge inside and then there are two different ways of calculating the average mean width of um, or the uh, width of this and which that then can be used in this formula to calculate the net area which is then used for other calculations okay um, so the spreading or the widening of um, the material in in the ruling process um, usually begins uh, after 1 by 3 um, of the pressed length so this is so this is so this is Um, I would like to ask a question if you can hear me because okay good <laughs> okay um, that's tricky because now I will never know when it turns off and turns on but yeah um, the uh, um, the it it was observed that the bulging of the sides side edges usually begins after one by three LD and this LD is basically the uh, breast length which means if this is a roller and this is a roller and the material is coming in here it is going out here if the material is coming in here going out here and this is total LD after 1 by 3 LD the widening starts to occur and ends when the material is out and this is just a picture showing widening during round or oval uh, groove rolling so so um, this is where rolling started and this is where we see the the part with to start widening and because this uh, widening is important for us, there are different models and methods and tools and techniques to calculate this um, based on several assumptions. So several people have uh, developed different models and techniques and methods to calculate this, um, which are shown in, um, um, in, in these slides where there is one uh, Wustowski model uh, where they use different a b c d and f coefficients and then all these coefficients are dependent on other different parameters um, here you can see that 
A is dependent on temperature coefficient, C is uh, sp uh, speed coefficient, D is correction factor for the material, and F is coefficient of friction, which is dependent on roll quality and surface quality. And then what they have done is they have provided different values of these coefficients. So A is one when the total um, the temperature is greater than 950 degrees centigrade and a is 1.005 slightly higher when the value when the temperatures are between 750 and 900 degrees centigrade and then um, the f coefficient the coefficient of friction uh, is shown here that it the value is slightly different for sorry uh, different materials and different rollers and their different um, surface conditions and then the velocity coefficient c is depending on um, is depending on um, gamma and uh, v the linear the um, linear velocity and this c can also be um, oh oh And this C can also be um, calculated using. Um, so there, there are different plots to measure C, where gamma is all these lines here. Um, rolling velocity is given here, and the value of C is given here. So for example, we know that the value of our total reduction gamma was let's say 0.8 or 0.9 so then we will select that line and then we know that what is the rolling velocity which might be this and from here we can identify the value of C which we want to use in our model and so there are different methods and tools uh, analytical tools developed by different people we are analyzing here one of them to um, find out all these values of coefficients, put them in the equation and calculate the overall uh, widening of the material during this process. And you will see that it is relatively um, complex and complicated to do it. And therefore, in the beginning, uh, instead of adding all this complexity in the model, we assume that um, it is, uh, we assume that the width of the sample is not changing. So we get the understanding of it and then add all these complexities in. And then there is another uh, Freiberger widening model in which um, uh, we calculate the uh, the ratio of initial uh, the final width over the initial width, and uh, then this can be used to calculate the initial uh, if we know the initial width it can be used to calculate the final width, but it is depending on several coefficients. And then you will see here the values of all these um, coefficients and their dependence uh, where. CW is um, the material parameter temperature uh, the effect of influence temperature uh, is of, uh, temperature influences in C phi rolling speed is uh, friction rolling gap longitudinal tension um, filling level and caliber diagonal rolling so all these values are uh, basically extracted using different methods and techniques and um, analytical tools and they are give, and they are provided as an input for these models where then um, the actual outcomes are calculated for how how the widening in the material is taking place which can make our calculations relatively more accurate than before now now we have overall uh, uh, studied and compared the analytical model versus the other solution techniques. Um, um, the methods and techniques for accurate modeling. In the previous lectures by Dr. Irani, you have studied several uh, techniques to numerically solve um, physical problems. Uh, what are different techniques to uh, model and solve um, the physical systems? Um, now, the analytical uh, numerical models like this one, the one we discussed in the lecture earlier, are simple uh, and fast. So we saw that when we just change one value in Excel sheet, it quickly we can quickly get the results, um, but are based on several assumptions and therefore are not extensively used in reality because the values are close to what we would expect but they're not that accurate um, to the extent which we need and therefore we need numerical models of physical systems which are with less assumptions and more accurate results 
but when we do it it becomes the models become more complicated and require large computing powers and therefore the same ruling process which we model right now um, can also be modeled more accurately using finite element method and that is something which we will study in the next lecture um, just to give you a heads up um, the building blocks of the ruling process model are contact boundary conditions so today we saw that um, the tribology um, the surface quality is given by the friction coefficient mu thermal boundary conditions are cold warm or hot ruling conditions and the, te the effect of temperature will also the temperature will also affect the formability of the material and then the boundary conditions for example the initial thickness and the final thickness and the roll diameter and so on and so on and then we also have other process parameters which are mentioned here um, and all these attributes can be combined in a constitutive model um, which is um, thermomechanic uh, with it, certain thermomechanical properties with microstructural model dynamics and uh, final component properties and can be this whole model can be then solved to get a desired output which will depend on all these attributes and um, properties for example in today's um, topic we did not take into account the material attributes and what, what the material is but we only took into account the uh, overall um, the overall geometric input and output of the material but of course if we want to more accurately model it then we also need to take account of that and that is something which um, is relatively complicated is difficult to solve by hand and therefore we require um, other um, computational tools um, uh, the methodology to design a rule process is basically um, to add description of the material evolution um, um, uh, map the plant behavior which includes roll gap geometry and spring deflection behavior and then also the description of the interaction between equipment and forming process for example tribology and so on so these are all the um, parameters which we need to give as input um, for, to um, to define an accurate um, modeling and ruling process and then we can get our desired outputs and then I will conclude my presentation uh, or the lecture here um, with um, this slide again so the learning objectives covered in today's lecture were short introduction to the ruling process and its importance um, types of the ruling process and um, their setup um, the numerical modeling of simplified 2d high flat ruling process where we just took some assumptions simplified it and then geometrically solve it to um, get some outcomes uh, I would again suggest that please go and um, watch the YouTube videos which I shared the link of and you will um, understand better how, how these formulas come out and are derived which is not that complicated but yeah we didn't have time in this lecture to cover all of that and then you uh, and then use of developed simplified numerical models to calculate the given ruling process parameters and then we use those formulas in the form of a worksheet to calculate to do some calculations of course you will need some more time with that um, uh, with that worksheet and so you can get more acquaintance with it and use it for future calculations and then um, we s proposed some solutions to underlying simplifications during modeling and then we saw the methods and techniques for accurate modeling which we will cover in the next lecture and yeah that's what we did today um i would like to finish my lecture here thank you very much for your attention if you have any questions you can write them here i'm here for some time to answer them um and um that's from my side. The lecture slides and the worksheet are already uploaded in the Opal portal, so you can get access of that from there. Um, the recording of, of this lecture will probably be quickly shared now on the um, university video stream website, of which you can find the link of in the um, Opal portal again and uh, yeah
I will stop.